The Kano State Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission has recommended the suspension of the Emir of Kano, Al Haji Mohammed Sanusi the second over alleged misappropriation of 3.4 billion naira by the Kano State Emirate Council. Now, some of some say it is the governor which hunting the Emir, but I still have in the studio um, Ugo Ikeko, uh, of course, um, well, <laughs> a man who has been Syrian governor, a man who spoke without fear uh, about the ills in society, and then finally decided to become a monarch because the mantle fell upon him. I don't so, think it fell upon him. I'm <laughs> just saying. Yeah, well, let's not go into the politics of all that. Right. Then all of a sudden, he's being accused of misappropriation of monies. Do you smell a rat? Well, uh, I think it's, even though it's, it's, it's obvious to a blind man there is something that is going, uh, that is not going proper at the moment. And uh, I think it, it comes with the kind of environment where the kind of society we are. They say he, he who must come to equity must come with clean hands, all right? Uh, I feel for Sanusi, but uh, he, for example, like I was saying initially, even if you have to disregard the politics, all right, uh, he got into he got into the position of being an M because of political influence and people that helped him, right? And uh, I think he was caught up between. Isn't the... that the same in most places? I mean, it, it, it's the same, but the, the truth is that it's I, about who you know these days. It's yeah. no longer about who's next in line. Well, for me, yeah, that's what happened, all right? But uh, when he not got in and. The, there was a, the power tussle between Ganduji and Kwaku and so, right? That is the issue at stake, all right? Because of the last election, it was rumored that it, it didn't support uh, Ganduji. And remember, yeah, yeah, both of them are not best best of friends, all right? Even two days by the, the, the I think, the, 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 the future uh, prayer, they, were, they all shake hands and look like everything is fine. But uh, as it stands right now, uh, if the assembly, the people that inducted him said, okay, there's a misappropriation of phone, 4.3 billion naira, and the rest of them. Uh, when he was CBN governor, he raised, he raised such alarms, all right? Uh, if he has nothing to fear, all right, and if he has not uh, maybe uh, misappropriated phones in any way, and he has nothing to fear, let's just believe it's normal which one thing, in which at the end of the day he's going to come out clean. But the, the worst thing would be for him, who used to be a social crusader, all right, in terms of speaking out, in terms of calling out if even when there was none, like especially, because at the end of the day, uh, 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 the PwC report said the money that he alleged that was uh, stolen under good luck administration never happened, all right? So uh, for, for him, uh, at this point, I'm just praying that he didn't take the money, he didn't misappropriate the fund because uh, the assembly and everybody, the political establishment in Kano, they are going for his neck, all right, including the governor. Uh, some might say it's winch hunt, all right. But again, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to play the devil's advocate here. For a governor who has been seen on camera yeah. taking bribes yeah. and nothing has been done about it, and he, you know, says that um, apparently it was doctored, which I'm, I'm wondering how that video would have been doctored, but then for him to be having a voice in this kind of issue, does that not show double standards? It shows double standards. I was, we have a president that said that I didn't know the kind of technology that they use uh, to make that video. So right, it, shows you, it shows you the double standard and, and, and the whole uh, attempt at trying to read, up, read, read Nigeria away, uh, corruption away from Nigeria. It shows that it's just a smoke screen. There's nothing serious about it. It's all about who you know, uh, which camp are you loyal to, uh, who, who, who are you in bed with. So, so if these things, if you are in a good place with the good guys, all right, the good guys that are benefiting from the whole uh, establishment at the moment, you're fine, all right? Uh, Sanusi's issue is just a, is, I think it's a mistake of mis political miscalculation. And both of them have not found that an avenue to go as, okay, let's help this man out in the gentleman, okay, I'm sorry, you know, something like that. Because we, we know some of this back, backroom stuff happened, right? And at, at the moment, I think he's just been hell bent of being an M. But the thing is that, for example, the governor was caught on camera, all right? Uh, taking money from somebody, contractors, and the rest of them. He has an immunity. All right, which is part of what the Nigeria Constitution provides for him. All right, so at this moment, uh, unless what can, it can be proven, no investigations can be done, but then nothing can be nothing done can to be him. Nothing can be done to him until he's done with this. Uh, until he's done as a governor, then somebody cannot go to court and say okay, because you abuse your office, so 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 thing will happen to you. But a traditional ruler in Nigeria today does not have any political immunity, does not have any immunity of any sort. All right, so uh, Sanusi does not have any immunity covering him. All right, and if the, if these guys could prove 
that he misappropriated funds, he's going to go in for it, all right? Unless, like we saw in the past, when he has similar issues, all right? Because this is not the first time. Because initially, they brought out this issue of misappropriation of funds, and they said that the vice president intervened at that point to make sure that the whole thing was swept under and everything was fine. So. I don't know. Maybe he, he he will call his friends above him. That's okay. Please, this is another trouble. Can you get me out of this trouble again? Because my issue is this: uh, for a CBN governor, right? Uh, for somebody that that intelligence, smart people are people are looking out for him. To, okay, once you go down to once you get down to Kano, right? Because of some of the issues, social issues that we have uh, in the north, you, you you act as a reformer. You act as somebody that will, you know make sure that uh, far-reaching reform in terms of your own Emirates across maybe across other Emirates uh, in, in the far north. Some things that in terms of a girl child education, a stop child well, marriage. That's the rest one of, of the them. things that he advocated for uh, during the Eid prayers. He advocated that parents should educate their girl children as much as they educate their male children because it is very important. So he's one of those people who are crusaders for the girl child education. But let's go back to the nitty gritty of this case. Now, investigations show that um, there are some unregistered comp companies, you know, um, with the corporate commission or. Uh, they were dormant and they appeared in public uh, in the public search of companies register. The investigation also shows that the unregistered companies are linked to some of the identified suspects in the Emirate Council. It, um, it also recommended that further legal action should be taken against all the suspects as soon as the final outcome of the investigation were concluded. Now, there's a twist to it. A Kano lawyer and activist has said that, um, Abdul Salam Yusuf has said that what happened was that some interested people petitioned the Kano Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission, alleging misappropriation of funds to the tune of $2.4 billion in the Emirate Council. But Ibrahim Miriam, a Kanu civil rights activist, contended that the said money was actual money inherited by Sanusi. Well, well uh, for, uh, there's, there's a lot of back and forth, right? Uh, the Sanusi camp, the Ganduji camp, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the the group behind uh, the, the investigation and the rest mm -hmm. of them. For me, all right, I think this is, this is a case where uh, uh, even though I'm not, I'm not okay uh, with the messenger, all right, I can live with the message. All right, corruption, misappropriation of funds at all levels, all right, from the local level down to the highest level, be at the federal level, should not be a part of our. Should not be a part of be the political or the church or anything. Part of our institutions in any way, right? What these, what, what these guys have gone out to do, all right? Some, may, some may term it witch hunting, all right? But I think for me, if you ask me, I think it's good for our democracy. What happens now, right? Let's take this into the court of law, all right? Uh, if Sarusi feels that he has a case, if he, if he feels that he has not done anything wrong, thank God there is no immunity covering him. Right? He can go to the court and defend himself. And if the court finds him wanting, then they can take action. And if the court doesn't find him wanting, the people will know that for once, this man is true. This man is not corrupt. This man has been doing his duties, and this man has been beyond reproach in terms of anything he's doing. So whatever that has happened to him so far is purely a case of a political winch hunt. And I believe that might as well as turn the heart of the people of Kano away from the governor. All right? So it's for him to come clean. All right? uh, if these companies that were saying that uh, some of them are shadow companies in CAC, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, people, that people, they're not real. They're not real. People used it under the Emirate. It does not make sense, all right? Because as a former central bank governor, it, 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 this allegation, all right, uh, put a lot of things into doubt, right? If this could happen under the Emirate, maybe something like this happened under your tenure under as, his a, watch a, as, as a CBN but governor. But then also, um, that activist, uh, Miriam um, Ibrahim, who is a kind of civil rights activist, she has called for an invest independent body to investigate these allegations rather than the state-owned anti-corruption agency because she feels that there might just be interest. So then they say, well, all the people that EFCC have been prosecuting for the last uh, few months and the last few years, all the other politicians on different parties, they will start asking for independent uh, independent uh, prosecutors to come and verify and, and query. With well, the, EFCC is a federal body, then so the, the, they the, have no... Uh, affiliations to states. Uh, uh, in different states, we have, we have different uh, uh, anti-corruption agencies. Yes. You, you have ICPC, uh, EFCC. Some of them are located on the state level, all mm -hmm. right? Because EFCC is not just just that they have legal state EFCC office. They have like the command and rest of them. We so all of them are empowered to do their job at the local level, at the state level, uh, at, at the local level, be that local government. So, if for example, uh, the chairman of one particular local government in Lagos State has misappropriate funds, all right? The 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 agency. That has been empowered by the law, or uh, within that within that environment, within that permanent police can ask questions, can take it to court. All right. So for me, I think that argument is null and void. There is no need but at this there, point. But there, but there is some 
I don't think that there's truth to it. I don't want to make that uh, opinion. But I'm saying most people have, before now, condemned or actually accused these state-owned agencies, whether they're independent or not, of being, you know, run by government or, you know, of, whether of, we like no, it or of, not, no, the of, hand of ESA uh, sometimes is found no, in it. So, no. so maybe calling for independence investigation is so that nobody would try to pin who, anything on who, anyone. Who, who would pay the independent investigation? Uh, the, the, I the, wonder. So because at the, at the end of the day, this, this, you're using taxpayers' money to pursue a political vendetta. All right. The, the truth is, this, this is clear. All right. Uh, from from the federal level down to the state level. All right. For example, it's even, it's, it's even argued that sometimes you see that in, in the House of Assembly or the National Assembly, sometimes they they are in there to serve uh, the, the plans of the person at the executive level. All right. Because at the end of the day, they need budgetary. All right. They need money. All right. For, from the executive. All right. And so if the executive said I want you to do a, definitely they will do a. All right. And, but this is part of the issues we have with our democracy. Because what happens at our institution? Because what happens that the institution is not is not serving the interest of the elected official, and at the end of the day, make a mess of our institution because some of these institutions are supposed to be neutral, supposed to do their job uh, without fear and favor. So uh, it shows the kind of uh, people we have at the helm of affairs. They are not right. Some of them are not the right people to, to handle some of these issues. But the, the key issue at this point is that it's clear to some people they've said, okay, this is a political win shot against uh, MS Sanusi. Uh, that argument eh, is valid. We can listen to that, all right? But my issue is this whether it's political win hunt or not, all right? Did this man, the Emmet, did he misappropriate funds? If, he, if, if, if in any way his hands are clean, all right, he, he didn't, he didn't loot, he didn't loot funds. Uh, he didn't use a shadow company from the CAC to do some transaction in terms of buying stuff, in terms of uh, the project that the Emirate awarded. If he didn't do all of this, all right, and his hands are clean, then he has nothing to fear. Now, whether it is the Emir today or it's Ganduje when he steps out of office, so. It be the vice presidency. You, you know, there have always been accusations of misappropriation of funds, and every time issues like this come up, the first thing we hear is, "Oh, it's a witch hunt. Oh, you're fighting your political enemies." Will we ever get to a point where we can actually fight corruption as, as a country, independently, without? interest or fear of favor or trying to cover one person because the person belongs to your team or to your camp. Do you see a Nigeria where this can happen anytime soon? Well, uh, it's, a, it's a tough one, but the, the truth is that police is all about interest. You know, human relations, political relations, everything's all about interest, all right? And uh, for the leaders at a different level, if, if they find a reason to believe that someone's hands is not clean or someone has looted money, and EFCC is there, is there to do their job. Because at the end of the day, the EFCC or whichever uh, institution, be the ICPC, any of them that have been empowered by the law, all right, to uh, tackle corruption, the, the executive funds them, all right? And if the executive feels, okay, this is the direction I want to go, all right? It, it, it might tell me political corruption at the end of the day. But the truth is that being in this country where for once that a former IG, right, was called, that's Tafa Balogun, all right? And he paid, he paid the, as for some other people, right? So for, for me, uh, we might not, that might, that will not go out uh, expressly because it's part of the whole process. It part of, uh, sometimes look like. Uh, um, Do you think we have a role to play in it not going the way it should go? Because we also have a way of singing praises to those people because we always have that, oh, it's my brother. When it was your brother, we didn't say anything. What, what Do you think that that's going to also be what's befalling us? I think, I think for, for the people, like already we're we, we seeing what's happening in Cannes, all right? We have, we have uh, different voices saying different things, all right? Uh, for the camp of uh, for the camp of the, uh, the the MA, for the camp of the governor, and for the camp of the agency that is in charge of uh, of the investigation. For me, like I always say, let's take it to the court. All right. I, I, I strongly believe that sometimes, yeah, some people don't believe in our court process, but we've had, we've had many success, and it's not, it's not, you might say they're not like the best in the world, but we've had some uh, landmark judgment that at the end of the day has, that has helped our democracy to become a little bit better. All right. So if you feel whether, you're being, whether it's political winch hot or whether it is real, corruption case, let's take it to the court. If the EFCC can prove, or whichever agency can prove that you, uh, you've, def you've defrauded the nation, or, you, or you, 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 you took funds that was not meant for you to do something that you're not supposed to do, so then go to the court. Let the court decide that, all right? Uh, all these things, whether it's- But there are people also say the court is part of the problem. The courts and the dragging of dates and, you know, sometimes makes it so difficult to actually, I mean, people will still point to how Onogan's case went. If we are able to expedite action in cases such as that, what's happening with other cases that are lingering? But they, 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 like, for, for example, right, like I say, like in the, the democracy is evolving, right? There used to be a time in this country where election petition tribunal was held was for years, right? 
we've, we've got to better at it, right? All right. It's within within a year, uh, six months, the whole process, maybe from the appeal court to the Supreme Court, everything is covered. All right. So it, it, it takes time, but the only but the only, but the only way we can we can get to this thing is, is to proper engagement. You know, ask questions and say, okay, this doesn't work well. This this works well. All right. Because uh, and the judiciary themselves, they have they, then themselves will look inward. All right. To say, okay, if the people because the people because the people that goes to court are Nigerians every day. If the court process doesn't favor, if the court process does is not as it should be. All right. There is a feedback mechanism, all right? Uh, they have the, uh, the NBA conference yearly. They have the judicial and the judicial meet at, at, at right. And so, when if all the, the most important thing, one of the things that we fail to do as a country, uh, as a people, is that engagement is key in governance. Engagement, discussions, you know, having having discussion because it's from discussions that we okay, we say we adopt, we want to do this, we don't want to do this, we make forward, right? And part of the issue in having this country, right? We, we just a uh, few days ago, few days ago, uh, some people celebrated uh, uh, the Biafra, uh, what's it called, uh, the, uh, the war and the rest of them. If we don't have some conversation about some things, if we don't engage ourselves on some issues, if it be it healing, right? Be it, be it, be it uh, issues about okay, the government is not working well. Okay, what do we do? We have to come to the table with with an honest mind that we, have, we need answers to our problem. Mm. We, we can't. We can't. Uh, nowadays, the, the thing that is trending in Nigeria is the executive order. All right, you cannot executive order ourselves out of potholes or out of traffic. So the thing is that if the governor say there's an executive order, so how is an executive order? How will it solve uh, my commute from uh, from uh, let's say from Obalende to Aja, which is three hours? So, so these are the questions we are supposed to have. And when there are town halls meeting, uh, because uh, the, ne the last National Assembly, this, the, the, led by Saiki and Dogara, they, they made happen uh, where budget hearing, budget, budget hearing uh, uh, process, where the civil societies, everybody comes together to okay, what, what is what is what is happening with our budget? And these are part of the things that help uh, the democratic uh, process so as a country. So like carrying the people along. But not like carrying the people along. And the people themselves should not want to be carried along. Because the truth is the people don't want to carry along. Because the moment they carry along, they start asking questions. You start demanding for what you're, not, what you're supposed to demand. Okay. So the thing is that you have to carry yourself along. You have to ask questions. Don't wait for them. If you, the truth is this, and this is the game. If you wait for Nigerian politicians to tell you what he's doing, he's not going to say anything because information is key. Is why if you know the truth, you ask questions. Right now, Nigerians know the young ones know that if you are 30 or so, you can contest. So really, if you're interested, if you're a serious person, I want to win an election next four years. But now you should start working. For example, so but if you don't do that, how will you do that? So information is key, and we should not be waiting for elected officials. To, to give us that, like, to, mm. to feed we us. Take the bull by we the should horn. take the bull by the horn. All right. Uh, Ugochuku Ikako, political analyst, thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Well, that was an interesting conversation. We'll be putting aside our package for today to take a look at your comments on the termination of the 8th National Assembly. Let's take a look. <laughs>
Well, it's time for my take. Another day, another news of corruption by our leaders. What is really going on? Have the traditional rulers now caught the corruption bug? I'm wondering. I mean, or have they always been at it, simply covered up better? Whether or not Sanusi or the Emir of Kanu, the, I mean, is guilty, the investigation must run its course and its result made public. But to suspension? I don't know how necessary that is. But I also do believe that leaders, traditional or political, need to be careful in how they lead or rule and also need to be transparent. Now, the tenure of the ACES National Assembly has also come to an end. What can we say? Uh, was the performance good or bad? Did the variety of dramatic displays in the political arena turn sour, their regime? Or did it show that they were formidable against storms? Hmm. Uh, that is for you to decide. Well, I think all leaders everywhere and in every capacity should think of the day they vacate office and ask themselves if they want the feedback of their tenure to be positive or negative. Well, that's all for tonight, and thanks for staying with us. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow again on Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacone.